Welcome everybody. Uh, so great that you could come and join us again. Um, what a family, what a family we all are. It's awesome across the globe. So I just want to welcome you to the Anzac Watch. It's February 8th, Tuesday, 6 a.m. in Jerusalem and all other times around the world. Fred and Sue were taking a well-earned break. Um, and, um, and so we just bless them. And it might be nice if someone would just like to pray for them. We'll just pause here for a moment. Would someone like to pray great joy and refreshment over them before we go any further? Thank you. Abba Father, we thank you right now for your grace and your mercy, Lord God, as we do pray for Fred and Sue. We thank you, Father God, for the vision that they have for the body of Christ, Lord God, for the intercessors and the watchmen on the wall for all over the world. We thank you that you continue to give them strength. Father God, you said the joy of the Lord is our strength. So we thank you that they have joy, 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 joy. So we pray right now that, Father God, everything that you've ordained for them, their health, Lord God, we pray right now they walk in divine health. We thank you, Father God, they will fulfill the purpose and the assignments that you've ordained for each of them. And we just thank you, Lord God, that their marriage continues to be stronger and it's an example to all of us. We give you praise and glory. In Yahshua's name we pray. Amen and thank Yahweh. Amen. 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 Thank you. Now our focus is from fear to courage on the call to the wall initiative. Um, that's for this week, Fear to Courage. And today as we pray, we are praying from a place of courage and not fear because our God is an awesome God. And in the spirit of the Anzacs, fighting for freedom, that's the Australian New Zealand Army Corps, for those of you who may not know, they came together um, in the 1800, when was it? What was the date? Anyway, that's gone for me, but it was a long time ago. They came together. Sorry? 1918, I think. Thank you. And were victorious at their shiva and turned the tide of history for the Middle East. And it brought breakthrough. Um, and they defeated Turkey. So we declare today that our prayers will hit the mark and we'll bring breakthrough today. That's our, that's our desire. So would someone just like to lead us in, in prayer as we commit this time to the Lord? Thank you. Mm. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Lord, we thank you for this time we have. We thank you for this wonderful example from the ANSAC um, fight in this year, 1918, when they came together and when they considered the situation and took the moment and yeah, rose up in courage and you gave the grace to take the cities back for your nation Israel. And we want to do the same today. We thank you for the ANSAC watch. For the, um, we thank you what they have prayed for all the time now already in the uh, uh, past years. And we, we thank you that we can join them today. And we want to support them. But we want to also pray together what is on your heart today. We ask you to open our eyes what is possible with you. And yeah take our stands and fight for you jesus and you will fight for us we thank you amen amen amen, amen. thank you amen now i'm just going to um, put on a beautiful worship song it's called behold him so let's let's behold him together and um and worship him in spirit and in truth Well, now I'm going to hand over to um, Cynthia Lothian. Um, she's going to lead us into prayer for Israel. And then after we've done that, we will go into some prayer for Australia and New Zealand as well. But we're just so blessed to have Cynthia um, with us. 
Uh, she, her husband Andrew and her sister Diana have been traveling to Israel for many, many years, for months at a time. And um, while they're there, they are part of Sakat Halal and join Rick and Patricia writings. And so if you want to know anything about Israel, we're in very good company. Um, how many years is it, Cynthia, that you've been going back and forth to Israel? You need to unmute. Uh, thank you. Yes, yes. The first time was in 1987 when our youngest daughter was born there. And um, we've been going back pretty regularly ever since until COVID stopped us. Yes, yes. Yeah. that's wonderful. Okay, well, I'll hand over to you, Cynthia, and, um, and I've put the, the prayer points into the chat, but I need to repost them so everybody can get them. Thank you. Thanks, Alison. And you just yes. tell me when, you want to, when you're ready for breakout rooms. All right, thank you. Thank you. Well, just a little, little bit first. So thank you, everyone, for joining us. I know there are many who, here who pray so often for Israel and, and uh, I think that we would all be on the same page in that respect, which is just wonderful from all over the world. And it's just a special opportunity to come together to pray for and bless Israel, especially from Australia and New Zealand. Um, uh, and this is, of course, the Hebrew month of Adar, which the Global Watch is really uh, focusing on and it's the month that leads up to Purim the feast of Esther as we all know I think and uh, we are all aware that there is a call upon the Esthers and the Mordecais at this time and we I, I just feel so humbled and privileged that it's only those who are purchased by the blood of the lamb who can go boldly to the throne of grace and who can touch the golden scepter on behalf of Israel, what a what a humbling privilege it is. It sends shivers down my spine, and um, uh, so uh, so I feel that in this um, period of great a great challenge all over the world, um, wars, rumours of war, a volcano in our area with the earthquake and the tsunami um, and COVID, God is calling us and saying to us as individuals and nations, choose now whom you will serve. And I feel there's a really strong thrust from the Lord upon Australia and New Zealand to unite strongly um, on behalf of Israel at this time. This has always been our calling. It's been our calling against the enemies of Israel. We were in Gallipoli together, that's in Turkey, and then in Beersheba and right up, uh, marching through Israel all the way to Damascus as such a, such a strong calling, but it's always been joints. And I know that for Australia and New Zealand, there might be points of differ difference, but one point on which we all agree is our love for Jesus and our love for Israel. So um, I think God is really putting his hand upon us in this matter. And uh, we know we are wanting to be sheep nations. We know we are praying for our nations to be sheep nations. As, as Jesus said in Matthew 25, 40. And I think it is so interesting, isn't it, that Australia, we always say Australia was built on the sheep's back. And uh, New Zealand, you go to New Zealand and there are these glorious, glo pure white sheep everywhere that I recall, uh, different from the sheep in Australia, which are not so glamorously white. Anyway, it's to do with sheep. So we are called to be sheep. and. Um, and so I want to um, um, go through these prayer points. They're simple, um, just three of them. And um, first, and they're in the chat, but I can just read them out to you anyway. And the first one is that we should bless the land and the people of Israel from Australia and from New Zealand and from our own nations. And this is Genesis 12, two and three. God said to Abraham, I will bless those who bless you and I'll curse him who curses you. And in you, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. And um, I think we all know that when we, we bless Israel, we don't say, dear Lord, bless Israel. We all say, I or we 
bless Israel. We bless Israel. We bless Israel for protection, for wisdom for the government, for the right government that God ordains, and, and so on and so forth. So we, we have the privilege of doing it ourselves. And then secondly, um, that the governments of Australia and New Zealand will support Israel. And uh, this is uh, a bit different. We as individuals can do it, but we need our governments to do it. And I just turn to um, Psalm 2, of course, in, the, um, in the, the Passion Translation, and it's very strong and beautiful. Listen to me, all you rebel kings and all you upstart judges of the earth. Learn your lesson while there's still time. Serve and worship the awe-inspiring God. Recognize his greatness and bow before him, trembling with reverence in his presence. Fall face down before him and kiss the sun before his anger is roused against you. Remember that his wrath can be quickly kindled, but many blessings are waiting for all who turn aside to hide themselves in him. So that's a good basis to pray for our nations to, to bless Israel and for our governments to bless Israel, isn't it? And the third matter that I would like to um, mention is that we could pray for Aliyah. Now, one of the great themes of the Old Testament is the return of the Jews to the land of Israel. It's on God's heart from beginning to end of the scriptures. And he says, um, he, he says that he, um, he wants them back there. This is his desire. He says in Isaiah 43, 6, uh, that he, um, let me just read that. It's very brief. 43, 6. I will bring your children from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up. And to the south, do not hold them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. And that's really us, Australia and New Zealand and the islands of the Pacific. And so he has his eye on us for this purpose. And, um, and the other scripture that I have put in, 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 in the, up there for you to refer to is the Ezekiel, which is a wonderful one, 39, 27 to 29. Then they will know that I am the Lord their God, for though I sent them into exile among the nations, I will gather them to their own land, not leaving any behind. And this is Jewish people. I will no longer hide my face from them, from them, for I will pour out my spirit on the people of Israel, declares the sovereign Lord. Now, the interesting thing about Aliyah, the return of the Jews to Israel, is that when they are in Australia, New Zealand, USA, or outside Israel, God says they're in exile. And exile is never a good place to be. It's a place of banishment. And it's a place sometimes of punishment. God is not pleased to have his people in exile. So, um, so we want to pray them back. And we want to bless them back from our nations. We don't want them to have to be driven by the hunters. We want them to be fished by the fishers. We want to bless them as they go and to help them go. And I want to mention one other thing, especially for you New Zealanders, whoever's there from New Zealand. Um, yesterday, I heard from the Ebenezer prayer coordinators of, 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 of New Zealand. And um, Ebenezer is a Gentile group all over the world who helped the Jews to return to Israel. And in New Zealand, Auckland, of course, is the, the most, the capital with the most, it's not the capital, but it has the most highest population, but it also has the highest population of Jews. But one thing that happens sometimes, it's that there's a false aliyah and the Jews get sidetracked to go somewhere else because it seems safe and wonderful. And there's a very strong group of Jews in Auckland, I have heard, who encourage the Jews to go to the safety of New Zealand rather than returning to their home in Israel. And they offer them help, they offer them accommodation, they offer them support, I understand, in many ways. And this is a concern because it is false earlier. And so this is something that um, there may be people who might be called to pray about. So we have our three points. 
up there. And we thank you, Alison, that you will put us into groups to pray about these things. So we'll go out into breakout rooms. I think we're all back, are we? Really? Oh. <laughs> Jan, did you want to add anything um, about New Zealand and Israel? If you don't have to, just in case you'd like to add something. Nothing at this. Uh no, I, I didn't. I did pray in our, we did pray in our room about the Auckland situation. I, I have worked in Ebenezer Emergency Fund and um, oh. I've not ever heard that about Auckland because I know Ebenezer Emergency Fund's focus has always been to, to Alia and to support in whatever way. Um, I know there is a, a, a strong, prominent family in um, Auckland who, who were instrumental in, um, in setting up the Jewish school there. So I, I don't know, I've not heard of anything, but I will ask because um, that's quite disturbing. But we, I've prayed that, you know, maybe New Zealand will be a, um, a stepping stone uh, to Aliyah, to Israel. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, well, now we'll just um, focus a little time on Australia. Um, quite a few things happening here today. Um, like other nations, we're in a major battle for freedom and justice. And both inside and outside our parliament today, there's, there's quite um, a battle going on. Outside um, the old parliament house, we have a new parliament and an old parliament, um, but outside the old parliament house, there are thousands that have gone to stand for freedom, backing the, the truckers. And um, a lot of you would know Ruth and Laurie Webb, um, and they were, they, they're probably arriving there about now, they drove, um, and, um, and to join other Christians. And word has just come in the last hour or so that troublemakers are trying to derail the whole uh, freedom movement. So I'm going to suggest that we unmute for a moment and let's pray in tongues against this um, destructive spirit, this troublemaking spirit that is there right now. Um, it's supposed to be a a peaceful event, uh, and uh, we know from many other countries, you've all experienced it too, where you get the um, anarchy that um, that plays. And so could we just all unmute and just for a minute or so, let's pray in tongues together. We're we warring over Shall the Pepe, 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 the
Thank you, Father. So we, we just want to bless the people that are there with peace and protection. They're making a stand for our freedom. And of course, the media is portraying them in a very bad light, like they always do. But right now, um, as they are there, let's just um, agree in Jesus' name that his light, God's light, is bursting through and and causing all that darkness to disperse. And we give you thanks, Father. Now, there's also a battle going on inside Parliament as um, government is meeting about the Religious Discrimination Bill. And our Prime Minister promised that this bill would come about at the beginning of his term three years later, and it's on the agenda today. Admittedly, it was delayed because of the pressures of COVID. But just last week, a principal of a Christian college decided to uphold the biblical and scientific view of sexuality, and he asked parents to sign a contract supporting that view. Now, this is a Christian school. And the outcome was that the principal was absolutely slammed by a prime minister, the media, and the usual bullying and intimidation occurred and he's since withdrawn the contract and gone on extended leave. Now Australia needs a bill that's going to protect that kind of situation. It's going to protect churches, schools, families and individuals against religious discrimination. And anybody with a different view is a target. And we, we're sure that you have seen this in your own nations. And, and the discrimination against Christians around the world is absolutely on the rise. Anybody, um, anybody would understand that it's not nice to be discriminated against. And, uh, and we've had plenty of voices uh, put forward their views. They're taken notice of that Christians aren't. So this is something we want to pray about in a minute while we're together. Now, Scott Morrison uh, just the other day announced a pledge of $61.7 million to boost um, and help counter violent extremism, this is, this is the, the words that he used, amid growing alarm over surging numbers of anti-government conspiracy theorists. So basically, he is wanting to spend all this money uh, against people who are speaking any other way than what the government is speaking. And this is a, a great concern. So, would you just join with me? We won't go into breakout rooms, um, but I want to, to just put up some points and we can just open it up together and pray. We want to pray that our Prime Minister and all in the government would hate all forms of evil um, and that, that our, our situation would be overruled. And um, so we want to just spend the rest of this time, if you could just unmute and I will just put up what I have here. Hopefully you can read it. Can you all see that? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, so the first point is we're praying that Scott Morrison and all in the government would hate all forms of evil. And I'll put down Proverbs 8.13, that to fear the Lord is to hate evil and to hate pride and arrogance, evil behaviour and diverse speech. So um, 
can I just open it up, ask you to just unmute and let's just pray that there would be an awareness of evil. It seems to be um, deemed as okay this day and age, doesn't it? People are not spotting the evil and uh, it's all around us. So would someone like to pray? Thank you. Just remember to unmute. Yes. It unmutes the thing. Father, the whole earth is under the spell of destruction, under the spell of um, uh, disobedience and unbelief, I'd have to say. And um, Father God, we cry out uh, for you, those, Lord, who are in the valley of decision, um, Lord, that they would seek you, that they would you would turn them, Lord. You would have mercy. You would have compassion, especially upon our leaders who speak against your godliness and what you have uh, created, Lord. And so we just cry out for our governments. Father God, um, have mercy upon them. And we ask that you would turn their hearts like water as you've done for um, many of your people and your word in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And because of the time, we'll go on to number two. Thank you, Jan. Um, that the ungodly influences, and there's certainly a lot of them, are leading into law instead of freedom, that that would be broken over our nation. Galatians 2, verse 3 to 5. Yet not even Titus, who was with me, was compelled to be circumcised, even though he was a Greek. This matter arose because some false believers had infiltrated our ranks to spy on the freedom we have in Christ Jesus and to make us slaves. We did not give in to them for a moment so that the truth of the gospel might be preserved for you. We've certainly had infiltration uh, into our ranks um, that are evil infiltrations, plants. And um, so let's, would someone just like to pray along those lines? And that also that the God's people and those who are pre-Christians, and there's a lot of them out there that the Lord's moving on, that they would continue to stand strong and that the truth of the gospel will be um, will be received. So would someone like to pray? Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. God, I ask that you are taking out of the courts all the injustice and all the judges against your people and um, I ask for forgiveness because they don't know what they do. And I ask to destroy all the altars. For me, it comes to my mind to give such amount of money. It's like an offering, a sacrifice. To me. And I ask on the altar of the evil one. And I ask me to destroy this altar and to destroy these altars of the evil which are causing the situation and that you hold back because everything belongs to you mm. and it's not allowed to, to come on those altars. And um, that this money is, is not meant for, for this case, but it's meant for freedom and to support um, the widows and the, the orphans and uh, the poor. And not on, it's going on to your altar and not on the altar of evil. In Yeshua's name I pray. Amen. 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 And number three, uh, let's declare that the, our politicians are free from demonic influence. This is a real faith uh, prayer. 
free from demonic influence and holy and unholy alliances that cause error in decision making. Second Corinthians 1 Corinthians 1.12. Now this is our boast. Our conscience testifies that we have conducted ourselves in the world and especially in our relations with you, with integrity and godly sincerity. We have done so relying not on worldly wisdom, but on God's grace. And Micah 6, 8, and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God? Would somebody else like to pray? I would like to. Thank you. Alison. Thank you. First, first, I would like to bring Scott before you and say, we forgive you, Scott Morrison, for the mistakes you've made. And uh, that uh, we pray that uh, you would make Scott more understanding and give him the understanding of the witchcraft uh, that goes around and uh, the um, understanding of, of uh, spiritual praying mm -hmm. uh, in Jesus' name. And Father, we just pray and bind the spirit of witchcraft that is involved and in influencing many of our uh, our government uh, people and lord that they will be convicted to, to your word that says and what does the lord require of you people in government but to do justice to love kindness and to walk, walk humbly with your god yes amen amen amen, amen. thank you Loretta. amen Thank Amen. The time is almost gone. Um, I would just like to add this. If you could agree with me. Um, Father God, we release your power. And we ask in your holy name to set back the enemy's demonic plans over Israel, Australia and New Zealand. Yes. Mash it up with your hammer, the hammer of God, every unholy alliance, the wicked plan of the enemy into smithereens. Yes. Overturn and turn around what the enemy intends for evil and death to life and more life in Yeshua's name. We declare you reign over all, Father God. We release your goodness, your faithfulness, your righteousness, your holiness. We release your power, Father God. We release your angelic hosts. We release mm. the fire of God. Lord, that you would burn up all the dross. Father God, that you would continue to deal with the church as you must do. And again, Lord, we cry out to you for mercy. And Lord, we say we are so sorry for where we have failed as the body of Christ. Mm. Lord, we thank you that you are faithful, you are just, you are full of mercy. And Lord, you say that when we cry out to you, you hear us. Lord, you forgive us and that you would heal our land. So we thank you for the healing, Lord, that's underway right now. We mm. shut the gates of unrighteousness and we open wide the gates of righteousness. And we declare, let the king of glory come in. Let the king of glory come into Israel. Let the king of glory come into New Zealand. Let the king of glory come into Australia. And say, your kingdom come and your will be done in the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father. We give you all the praise and all the glory. We thank you that we can come together like this. And I just bless each one on the call. In fact, I would love to just pray, play very quick. It's a very quick, short Hebrew blessing if you've got time for one more minute. So I'll put that on. But bless you, dear ones, for uh, being with us today. And we just thank you. We're so grateful that you've come to pray for the Anzacs. I told you it was a short one. <laughs> Amen. Short and powerful. Bless you, everyone.
Thank you. Thank you, Alison. Bless you, Alison. Thank you. 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 B